Pay me, pay me, pay me my silver now. Pay me or go to jail. Pay me my silver now. Yeah, RoadToRuta.com. It is Friday the 23rd of February. Um, I posted yesterday a private road discussion, uh, Silver on the Cusp of Huge Changes. I got some uh, backup information on the amount of silver being used in these millions and billions of solar panels being put up um, every year. And the numbers are shockingly different than what the Silver Institute says and Metals Focus. Uh, Silver Institute's kind of a shell corporation for uh, Metals Focus providing those numbers. Uh, It's really, it's kind of embarrassing um, that they're so far off and they they know they're in trouble this year. This was the year that uh, solar doubled, doubled, and they have not talked about it other than saying, oh yeah, it went up like 20% more silver being used. That's not true. Um, you can see from my chart right at the first page of Road to Ruta what's going on with the solar panels uh, going from 252 to 443 plus the extra solar panels that were made but not installed, which was a massive amount. There's solar panels in every warehouse all around the world. So I talked about that on yesterday's private road discussion. Go check that out if you're looking for in-depth analysis of silver. Um, The Silver Institute doesn't release their annual silver survey until April. And then Jeffrey Christian does his after so he can, you know, steal some numbers and stuff like that. (laughs) <laughs> now, I, don't, I, I take it back, Jeff. Don't get all huffy. Um, but, yeah, Jeffrey will come in even worse. I mean, his explanations are ridiculous. Uh, but so are the explanations of the Silver Institute and Metals Focus. Um, they are not thrifting silver out of solar panels. That is, that is the chief lie being told by Bloomberg NEF, is that the solar panels these days, you know, all the silver is just going out of the solar panel so fast because they can. Yes, they can, but they'd lose efficiency. And so nobody tells you how much solar silver is being used. All the silver that is coming out of um, the mines is going into solar panels. And those don't come out anytime soon. It's not like there's going to be a lot of recycling of solar panels for about 25 years. Um, 25 to 30 years is the lifespan of a solar panel. So we have some serious stuff going on. Um, China has not stopped. They will double again. They will double their installations again and again. And as you can see from this Bloomberg chart below, they have a slow and steady rise. Every year they say, oh, this was just an outlying year. It went up so much because this is just different. No, this isn't different. This is the new normal. China is continuing to build new... Uh, solar panel production plants that are focused 100% on top con or better, meaning massive amounts of silver, way more silver than perk. And this year it's estimated 70 to 80% of all solar panels are going to be top con, which is a huge jump. So even if they did the same amount of installations of 443, 443 uh, gigawatts, it would be a hell of a lot more silver used, but they are not. As a matter of fact, here's an article um, that Bloomberg itself says that global, global solar installations could hit 574 gigawatts. And then by 2024, or 2025, 627, and then 800 gigawatts. And all of those would be TopCon for the most part, which uses a lot more silver than the PERC so there's a problem. There's a huge problem at the Silver Institute and Metals Focus. How are they going to explain this away? And I think I know that the tact they'll take is, is claiming that uh, silver is being thrifted. They call it thrifting silver out of the solar panels. But the reality in the last three years, because the silver price has not moved, there is no reason on the planet to thrift any silver. And I got a guy working on a report for me. He says at least, it'll take at least two to three times the current silver price for any thrifting to even be taken seriously. So that's a, what, a you know, $50, $70 price for any thrifting to be taken seriously. And even that would take a lot of time. And the solar, the solar industry would have to settle for less efficient panels. 
But right now, because the price is rigged so low and held down, they can use all the silver they want in solar panels and it doesn't affect the price at all. So why thrift out silver and get worse efficiencies if, you don't, if there's no need to? And that's what we're seeing. As a matter of fact, the efficiencies are going up, meaning they're using more silver, not less. And I would like to see the Silver Institute and uh, Metals Focus. Metals Focus really you know, is the brains behind the operation. Silver Institute runs cover. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Metals Focus needs to come to grips with the, the numbers they're providing are way off. And we knew this in the middle of last year, and yet they didn't make any announcements other than, oh, solar's doing well, it should go up 2%. It's ridiculous what they're saying. Solar, silver, ridiculous. <clears throat> so, um, currently at $22.91, uh, being held below the moving averages as usual. Um, here is the open interest for, so the last day of trading is February 28th. I believe it's the 27th, which is next, let's see, one, two, next Tuesday would be the last day of trading. And then it's a delivery month. March is a delivery month. And so right now we're looking at open interest for March is 40,735 contracts. It's 200 million ounces. Now, here's what is done. So these are 99% of these trades are the banks trading back and forth with each other to set the price. What happens as we approach the delivery date, they roll them over, and you can see it being rolled over to the May contract. And this is how they play their games. They love their games. A rollover means they can sell at least once and then buy back at any time. Um, and they do. And they, they time th these things with the, all the silver, comic silver derivatives. These are derivatives on top of derivatives are like the... Uh, EFPs, the exchange for physical, where they send the contract over to London for delivery. The TAS, uh, trade at settlement. Block trades, you name it. These are all derivatives of a derivative exchange. It's ridiculous. Just freaking ridiculous. Uh, Harvard Oregon pointed out that February 2024, this month, was very small. Only 41 million uh, exchange for physicals have been... Um, asked for and executed. That's about half, meaning potentially even London is running out of silver. Uh, we will know more in the next couple of days when February is done, but you know, in, in years gone by before, so we're at 41 million ounces. Um, the last February was 100 million ounces, and the February before that was 72 million ounces. So something's going on where the exchange for physical it might be that they don't have enough physical out of the London warehouses. We will find out. And again, I talked about this on the private road post. The U.S. Mint has once again stopped, stopped selling Silver Eagles in the month of February. They haven't posted any uh, sales for three weeks. And as it says right above at the top, total, uh, sale totals by month are updated weekday by 5 p.m. So that means nothing for three weeks. Why? Especially when it's on allocation. All that means is the U.S. Mint is telling their people, Jack Sermon, the head of Silver Eagles sales, do not sell any more Silver Eagles. Completely illegal in contract law. So we need to contact the U.S. Mint again. So go to the U.S. Mint and to the customer service. Or contact us, area. Contact us. And there you have a whole bunch of numbers. Call them all. Call customer service. There's the bullion program, 202-354-6829, and ask them, why haven't you posted any Silver Eagle sales for three weeks? And see what they have to say. Make them answer. They're supposed to be posting this daily. It says on the very front page of the U.S. Mint, right here, sales totals by month are updated every weekday by 5 p.m. They are not doing that. Unless they are, have made no sales in the last three weeks, which is impossible if they're trying to sell silver eagles. If there is a shortage of silver blanks, we need to know that. That is something they should have said before they stopped selling silver eagles. So call them up, and that's what we want to know. Why have you stopped selling silver eagles again? Why does it take us to scream at you guys to get your asses moving? Do something. 
I know you work for the government, but not all government positions sit on their butts. Many of them do, not at the Mint though, other than upper management. The Mint is an amazing place, but the, the reputation of the Mint has just been drag, dragged through the mud for three years now. It's embarrassing, but it's also illegal. So call them up, 202-354-6829 is the bullion program. I'd say, why aren't you making Silver Eagles? And if you are making them, why aren't you selling them? Because they are on, on allocation, so that means there's back orders. And if they're not on allocation, we need to know that as well. They have never, they haven't told the authorized distributors that allocation is over either, as far as I know. Anyway, uh, again, Bloomberg saying a uh, huge jump in solar, but Bloomberg is the one who's been saying, oh yeah, all the silver's being thrifted out. And that is a lie. That's a flat out lie. They don't say, you know, they, they don't get close enough to say how, why, or when. They did come out and say, um, that Longhi, Longhi, the largest producer of solar panels, is going to thrift out all the silver. And so we did a, a search for the patents on that, and it is possible that they will, but the cost is massive. And with $22 silver, why would they even try? So Bloomberg is, is assuming that manufacturers are thrifting out silver, but there is absolutely no evidence, and no patents, and no uh, empirical evidence that that is happening because it's not happening. All right, a great article right here. You guys have seen this one. Uh, that This is from uh, da, 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 the Australian uh, scientists. The learning curve for silver voltaics projected silver demand for net zero emissions by 2050. That at COP28, they moved 2050 to 2030. So now this has to happen even faster and as it says, you're gonna need massive amounts of silver. 85 to 98% of all silver reserves need to go into solar panels to uh, fulfill saving the world. And the best part about this is they show exactly how much silver right here uh, is consumed at the modular level and uh, per cell. It's all right here, go check it out. Um, and this is at, here, you can take a snapshot of that. It's uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, the silver learning curve for voltaics and projected silver demand for net zero emissions by 2050. Go check that out. All right, another great article came out from the Colorado School of Mines. Solar surge puts pressure on silver supply. As the global demand for solar panels soars, so does the demand for silver, a key component in the manufacturing of photovoltaic panels. Solar inst installations are breaking records worldwide in both volume and low price. According to Bloomberg NEF, see this Bloomberg keeps popping up. Installations were up 64% from 2022 to 2023 to 413 gigawatts. That actually got changed to 433, 443, sorry, 443. Uh, leading the charge in China. This was done a couple, oh, it was done in February. So yeah, they got that wrong. It's 443. Um, leading the charge is China with 240 gigawatts. That is true. Last year, Photovoltaics consumed 142 million ounces of silver, or 13.8% of total silver worldwide usage, up from nearly 5% in 2014, according to the Silver Institute. Um, it's more than 142, but we'll just, we're going to just give them the benefit of the doubt, because now is when, if we use that as a solid base, we can easily extrapolate how much silver was used last year, and that's what the Silver Institute is having problems with. They know the number's over 200 million ounces. They don't want to tell anybody that. So if we don't question the 142 million in 2022, then we have a better position and stance to say, hey, this is your, this is the way you guys calculate it. If you're gonna change the way you calculate it, you better tell everybody why you're lowballing the silver number. Um, the durability and high electrical conductivity of silver make it attractive, blah, blah, blah. Um, not only are solar insta installations multiplying, but silver use per solar panel is growing too, by a factor of more than two. More silver content makes more solar cells more efficient. Bloomberg estimates that by 2030, solar panels will consume about 20% of total silver demand given trend projections. That is way low, way low. Despite rising demand in solar, the supply of silver has not risen in recent years. 
Primary silver mines produce about 28% of the metal, according to the 2023 report. The other 72% of silver production comes as a bright byproduct of lead, zinc, copper, and gold projects. New silver mines are not coming online, though geopolitical through even though geopolitical disruptions, including COVID-19 and the Russian-Ukraine war, have strained the supply chain. Even with the heightened demand for silver, the price today of $22 per ounce is where it was 10 years ago. See, they're just pointing out the obvious. Prices should have gone up massively already, but it's being rigged on the derivative market. Um, technological innovations may, in the long term, uh, take some pressure off silver demand. Supply projections are based on current PV technology. But what if the technology changes over the next several years? One such, te such technology based on mineral called perscovite, which could eventually eliminate the need for silver and solar panels. And yes, that is true. But the cost doesn't work. And it won't last 25 years. So there's a lot to go on. So right now, all they're doing is adding more and more silver to solar panels to make it more efficient because silver doesn't go up in price ever. It doesn't matter if you, you get the very last ounce of silver, it won't go up in price. And then all of a sudden the markets will shut down. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, and then they, they finish up with uh, technology substitution could help dampen the stress on the global silver supply. It seems though that for the near and medium term, silver will remain a crucial element of photovoltaics and its use pricing, recycling, and other approaches will need to be employed. Silver demand from solar energy will need to be more carefully integrated into markets, mine, and processing investment, and solar pricing. Absolutely good article. Um, doesn't really delve into, it, it talks about how much silver is eating away, or solar silver is eating away at the silver supply, but it doesn't explain why the price has not gone up in 10 years. That's the key, and that's what we need to ask the, the CFTC, the regulator. How is it that all the physical silver on the planet is disappearing, and yet the price doesn't go anywhere? You hear me, Rustin Benham? <laughs> anyway, that's what I got for you today. You guys take care. Have a good weekend. Um, lots going on next week. We have a, a, the start of the silver delivery month for the COMEX. Again, historically... Um, they don't want to show anybody, so anybody what's really going on, so it'll probably go over to Europe, so you can't see the deliveries of silver. But everybody there, mother wants silver, and if you have it, stacking it in your own possession is the only way to benefit. Mining companies will not benefit from a soaring silver price because two, three, four, five, six hundred dollars silver, um, we're, we're looking at nationalization of mines that probably should have been nationalized in Mexico a very long time ago and they're talking about banning open pit mining now <laughs> which would take away a massive chunk of the largest silver producer on the planet so everybody's in on the game we are fighting the bad guys the best we can but it all comes down to the derivative price and that is controlled by JP Morgan Citibank uh, HSBC is a, a big deliverer this year I thought they were gone. They were one of the criminal banks who colluded with J.P. Morgan and Bank of America. Um, so we'll see. We keep fighting the fight. Uh, go to RoadToRuda.com if you want more info and check out the new private road post. And by the way, we are currently giving away the Theta family of tokens, a huge, huge um, potential for Theta, T-Fuel, and T-Drop. As we transition out of the old system and into something new, we're going to need massive amounts of bandwidth, which is what Theta is all about. Um, everybody in the mother is going to be looking into the crypto world. And, you know, it's pro and con that Theta isn't traded on Coinbase. Um, obviously, a lot more people would have access to it if it was, but a lot of the Coinbase stuff is uh, run by criminals. So <laughs> I don't know which is better or which is worse. Theta really doesn't need Coinbase because they got all these amazing partnerships with Google and Samsung and Sony. And they're doing it the right way, I believe, which is first you build it and then you announce it to the world. So, yeah, you have a, a chance to get in on something at the ground floor still, even after all these years. So go check it out. Go to RoadToRua.com. I'll talk to you later.